Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we are going to be talking about nabivalol. Later on in this video I'm going to mention nabivalol and its potential for weight loss as I think some might find that interesting, but in the beginning I'm going to be just generally speaking about nabivalol, and in particular its use in individuals who are using PEDs. So the reason nabivalol has got quite a lot of attention recently, especially amongst bodybuilders and athletes, is because it's one of these newer third generation beta blockers. What this means is it has the typical effects that traditional beta blockers were all familiar with, like propanolol have. However, they have additional mechanisms of actions. And this specifically refers to its agonism, so not antagonism, of the beta-3 receptor. The reason this is so significant is because with this agonism of the beta-3 receptor, it is postulated that this is the reason why nabivalol doesn't have the metabolic side effects that other traditional beta blockers have. And when I talk about metabolic side effects, I mean specifically in relation to weight gain, and potential for reduced insulin sensitivity. Now the reason athletes like this so much is because traditional beta blockers affect their workouts as well as makes them put on weight a lot easier, which is not favorable for a lot of athletes. And this is why a lot of athletes tend to avoid beta blockers. However, beta blockers might be beneficial in a sport such as driving or something that requires concentration. However, if you watch my previous video, you'll see that I'm quite a big fan of the use of beta blockers, especially amongst PED users. The reason for this is because of the fact that it helps regulate your heart rate, which we know becomes dysregulated when using high doses of PEDs, more specifically androgens, as well as it has the benefit of reducing your blood pressure, and we know blood pressure is an issue amongst PED users. Now the reason nabivalol is quite effective is because it seems to improve endothelial dysfunction a lot better than other traditional beta blockers. So essentially endothelial dysfunction is problematic, especially amongst the elderly. What essentially this means, and I'm oversimplifying this, is that vessels don't vasodilate when they're supposed to, and this results in high systolic blood pressure because of the increased afterload that is placed on your heart. Endothelial dysfunction has been shown to increase when using steroids, and if you know my approaches, I tend to like to negate these negative side effects that steroids could potentially have on your body. So a problem with steroid users specifically is that they have isolated systolic hypertension. What this means is that their diastolic blood pressure, so the number on the bottom, is always within range. However, their systolic blood pressure, the number on the top, is always out of range. And I'm talking about numbers between 140 upwards of 160 that I've seen in steroid users with normal diastolic blood pressures. Now the problem is that whilst the treatment of this would be typically to use antihypertensives, a lot of bodybuilders discontinued the use of antihypertensives, especially ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or calcium channel blockers, due to the fact that their diastolic blood pressure decreases quite a bit, and this can sometimes make them feel faint. However, this is purely observational. And again, another observation I've made when it comes to bodybuilders in particular, nothing works quite as well at lowering just systolic blood pressure as well as nabivalol does. And it has studies to show that its reductions in systolic blood pressure are significant, and it seems to maintain diastolic function quite well, which is important because you do not want your diastolic blood pressure to decrease too much since that is the pressure that is used to refill the coronary arteries during diastole, which is important for perfusing the heart muscles. And this is typically why a lot of bodybuilders will complain they feel faint when using antihypertensives because it drops their diastolic blood pressure too much, which is why nabivalol is sometimes useful in these cases. Now another interesting effect that nabivalol has is it seems to interact with the nitric oxide pathway. Whilst I can't remember the specific mechanism of action, it seems to improve nitric oxide within the endothelial cells and this helps one vasodilate, so essentially the vessels expand and this will decrease your afterload and essentially your systolic blood pressure. Now quite a good combination 
especially in PED users. I don't recommend this for the average individual, but there is a lack of research amongst PED individuals. And that is the combination of low-dose nabivalol with Cialis for treating specifically isolated systolic hypertension. The reason they work so well is because Cialis works via this whole nitric oxide synthase pathway. Sorry if I'm screwing up the terminology. And this essentially further enhances that endothelial function that nabivalol restores when nabivalol is taken. So with that out of the way, and that being the reason why I find nabivalol quite favorable amongst PED users, let's go on to its potential for weight loss. So when compared to other traditional non-third generation beta blockers, there are quite a few studies demonstrating that weight reductions in the nabivalol group is more significant than that of the non-third generation beta blocker group. And this has been demonstrated in a few low quality trials, however there have been some better quality trials which demonstrate that even when compared to placebo, nabivalol might have more of an effect on weight reduction than not being on a beta blocker does. Now it's just from my analysis, the sample size was small and the weight reduction that nabivalol causes might not be as great as one might think, especially when compared to placebo. The reason nabivalol has been touted as having these great weight reduction effects is mostly because in these trials they're compared to the traditional beta blockers which are notorious for weight gain and that is why nabivalol looks so favorable. However, when compared to placebo, the weight reductions when put on a calorie restricted diet are more or less the same, however it was demonstrated to be more significant in the nabivalol group. So what about in PED users? Well, we don't have really any studies of nabivalol used amongst PED users. However, what we do know from studies is that testosterone upregulates these lipolytic beta receptors on adipose tissue. And since nabivalol targets these beta receptors specifically with the beta-3 receptor being agonized, theoretically the combination of nabivalol with an androgen like testosterone should result in greater weight reduction. And the reason I mention this is not for anyone to try this specifically unless you have an indication for the use of nabivalol, but it's my attempt to make it seem more appealing to those reluctant to use nabivalol who need nabivalol, specifically when their argument is that nabivalol will cause weight gain and decrease performance in the gym. That is all the information I have on nabivalol currently. There's probably a lot of stuff that I missed, however those are the most important things regarding nabivalol that I think most individuals should know about, especially if you are a PED user. I think you might benefit from the use of nabivalol quite a bit, and the weight gain has not been established in studies, and theoretically or through molecular data the use of nabivalol with androgens might in fact enhance your weight loss. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, what you think about nabivalol, whether you use it, your experience with it, and I will see you in the next video.